Hello everyone, welcome to the NPTEL course on remote sensing and GIS for rural development. This is week 10, lecture 5. In this week, we have been looking at different platforms, remote sensing platforms and remote sensing derived data for NDVI. NDVI has been a very strong indicator for assessing the vegetation health and crop acreage, number of times the land has been cropped or net irrigated area. And it is at a very high resolution compared to the observation data, both spatially and temporally. So instead of getting data for once a year with a big, big lag time, here we are getting data within a month and at 15 days intervals. So in the past, we have looked at Bhuvan's data sources, NASA's data sources, Google Earth Engine's database. And now we will look at one more aspect of NASA and then look into Sentinel Hub. So in the past, as I said, uh, Bhuvan data is good for the Indian regions. Uh, it has some spatial and temporal issues in terms of resolution. Um, it is limited uh, to 2021, whereas we are in uh, 2023. So approximately a year and a half uh, lag time can be noted. Whereas Google Earth Engine catalog gives you data uh, for within a lag month, uh, one month, which is um, you can get also data from Jan, Feb, how we are in March. So March 2023, you can get it for Jan and Feb. Uh, and uh, NASA's USGS focus mostly on the NASA data that is available. And uh, we also have um, uh, the Sentinel, which is the European Space Agency ESA uh, data set. Uh, I will go through uh, the other part of NASA's visualization and analysis tool, uh, which is very important for understanding the groundwater uh, and NDVI issues. So without further ado, I will open the uh, GES disk uh, web page. So we have completed the NASA Earth Explorer, but while I was showing how to download data and access the data, uh, I also wanted to show uh, some parts of the uh, NDVI data that another portal can give, which is the Giovanni. So I'll continue again with the uh, Earth Explorer. So I'm going to click this and open the Earth Explorer page. <clears throat> So in the Earth Explorer, we said that we have uh, all these data sets uh, that are um, available for uh, NDVI, and then we can download it uh, as marking and done. But in the GIS disk database, what we noted is if we do NDVI and then put our bounding box on India, the default date can be given. So you don't have to put a date. You can just click, uh, and then these two data sets come up. In these two data sets, we clicked on the first data set and went into online uh, archive. So the online archive, as we said, we looked at the different folders and within the folder, there's multiple data sets. We wanted to know how to download it. We can also read these um, links. Then you can also get, get data. It will ask you what type of data you want and then refine the data range. Uh, etc. So it says download method is get original files uh, and then you can define the range. So let's just do a quick uh, 2015 is the max they have for this uh, type of data set. You could see that there's, these are all blacked out. There's no data. So Jan 2016, you can have 30. Uh, 30th December, you can have or 31st December. That's fine. Okay. So we have uh, the whole of 2015 data. It's just for the sake of uh, this exercise, we'll do it. And the file format is only HDF. Okay, so this is the get data button. You don't have to go through the uh, download HTML and stuff. Okay, so if you say get data, what it does is it runs and talks to the uh, database um, in the US and brings all the data to this uh, page. And you can see that the monthly data has been there. 
um, instead of going to each folder and then clicking, uh, you can also do this uh, as one. So if you just click it, it will ask you to um, a login and then get the data. The login is to just show how much people uh, use the data, etc. The file lists are valid for two days. Suppose you have slow internet uh, and bandwidth, you can still have this page in your login. You can go to the login and download data sets and then this will be there. So the link has been created uh, automatically for you. It says if you have already account, create an account, link this GES disk to your account and then download. Uh, download the list of links or how to get a widget. Widget is again uh, an automated process for getting the data. It's kind of advanced, let's not go into that, but download the list links. So this is the list links that you can download and then it's a text document. It will give you the link for downloading the data Okay, with your login. So that is the download instructions and download list is there. So these are the list links and stuff. And what are the parameters you wanted to select? You wanted the modest uh, vegetation in, uh, indices, so the both indices are there. Uh, the uh, vegetation fraction in DVI is there, and then the date range you have given as 2059 to 2015-12. That is what it gives. So you can refine and re-download re it, um, and then get the data. Okay, so this is the uh, one way of getting it. So three options are given: online archive, where you go to the folder, you download it. Get data is also there. The Earth data search is also good. Uh, the Earth data search uh, opens the um, um, dashboard at once. Uh, and in the dashboard, uh, it has already searched for you because it is linking to the GES disk database, uh, this database. So what it happens is from here, it has linked the data to the Earth data search box. And that particular uh, refinement is not there, but you can still get it. So this is the data set. Uh, and so there's one match for your data set, which is NDVI uh, and for your particular uh, link. Uh, however, you could see that the date is still at 2000 to 2015. So you will need to uh, refine it. Okay, You can click on the metadata to see what the data is about. So this is the version 5 um, and then the data is given for the whole globe. Um, and then um, some other keywords, what is the format, HDF format, etc. Okay, so you can go back uh, to your uh, search and then say, I want to download. So this is to add collection to the current project. You can add the collection and then it will be there in your account for download, my project, my download. Okay, so but before that, let's also show how this can be used. I am going to say, I just want NDVI. And then a lot of NDVI is coming. Um, and then let's say I'm going to press enter. It will show you what are the Earth data search uh, database uh, tags with NDVI. So one thing which is clear is coming out is that there are multiple databases saving the same data uh, or process data in online versions. All of these are open source. All you have to do is just click on a particular uh, link and get the data if you have the login uh, credentials. So here what we are seeing is there are features available from the cloud, custom models or map imagery, instrumentations, platforms, uh, you do you want airborne platforms or land-based platforms, space platforms, let's say airborne. Uh, air, air based is mostly the hyperspectral from a drone and other imagery. Um, and then very, very small uh, lakes, for example, big trail lake is done using the drones uh, and uh, very, very small area coverage is there. Okay, so if I just take it, uh, so here you can see jet propeller, um, unmanned, ve unmanned vehicles is also there. See here, click it and then click it. You can see jet propeller uh, un uncrewed aerial vehicles A or unmanned is also there. So the U, A, however they want, they can use it unmanned aircraft vehicles uh, or un unmanned um, um, uh, aerial vehicles. Uh, and here they say another term, which is new also for me, which is the, un, uh, un let me see if we can read it. It's not coming up, let it come up uh, a bit. Um, yeah, so it says uncrewed. So unmanned and uncrewed um, uh, people not there, that's all it says, okay? So uh, these are different platforms. Uh, I'm gonna click all so all the platforms can come up. 
Uh, so you see all platforms are there, instrumentations, which sensor, which satellite sensor you need, camera center, multispectral, hyperspectral, uh, and all the systems. And then organization is at NASA. Uh, NASA is there, um, Oak Ridge uh, National Laboratory, processing levels, um, and then projects, if it's particular projects, NASA's project, data format, HDF. So all the formats are openable in QGIS. So that is the beauty of op using the open source system QGIS all formats can be opened or converted. So you can readily convert these formats in QGIS. Uh, I haven't seen that um, strength in proprietary softwares yet. Uh, latency is how, how delay you want the data, one to two, three hours is there, and then you can use it. So for example, you can click the 16 day uh, gridded uh, data, just click on it, it will show you uh, how many grids are there uh, for every 16 days. And then uh, you can download every uh data set that you want you don't have to download all the uh 1400 uh data sets because uh this is 15 days uh, and then sometimes they'll double duplicate data so this is from 2023 to forever so 2023 is still going on right so what we could do is you can actually filter by date so here you can put the date uh let's say i'll put uh november 1st to december 2021, December 31, and then apply. And so now it's going to get recess. So now from 148,000 to now 42 collections, which is good, manageable, you can download each one. So you just add it to your download page, or you can just quickly download it after you have the, um, so it's just populating the link, uh, and then it will let you uh, download the file, okay? So as I said, you can download the file uh, after you have the login. Um, and that is what it's asking, your login passwords and stuff. Okay. So you do have to have an account. Uh, so make sure you create one account uh, pretty soon for this database. So there's a lot of data that could be uh, taken up for uh, NDVI. Um, and one more thing I would like to show is a ready-made a product where you could do some quick analysis. Okay, so let's do visualize data. If you click on visualize data in GIS disk thing, it opens as Giovanni. You can also go to Giovanni, uh, just this link, it will take you there. Uh, Giovanni is an application. Okay, let's, let's see if we can redo that again. Because uh, there is a note which comes up, says it what it is. So this application allows you to visualize uh, the parameters. Um, and you can have a help uh, page to look at how to do it. I'll quickly do this, but you can definitely read it for your future understanding. And then you have to have a login. Okay, so let me close this here. Uh, you can hear this is the type of analysis you can do. You can do a time average map, uh, time average overlay map, map accumulated comparison between two maps, uh, selected area average, time series averaged, et cetera, et cetera. So this is an analysis type. So let's say time average map or uh, time series. Let's say time series, uh, time series area averaged. Yeah. And then we're going to say that I'm going to have uh, 2022 just to make sure the data is available. Uh, we'll just say first Jan to, you don't have to put the time, time is not needed, to 2022 December. Okay, December 31, and we're going to say the bounding box. I said the numbers for India, if you don't remember it, it's okay, we can just uh, use the box and then click the box. The box symbol is different here. So you can just say it's around 64, 63, 40, 104, right? So 64, 63, 4, 5, 9, 98, which is 100, and then 40. So you can click this box again, and this is a uh, select a shape file. If you have a shape file, let's say for India, uh, Maharashtra boundary, you can add it here, uh, and then you can do this. And here, as I said, you can type NDVI, and it has come up NDVI, and then it says search. So when you click search, all this will come into account. So from one year time period for the India platform, this data is coming up, uh, and it has monthly resolutions of 0 0.05 degrees, 2002 to uh, Jan. As I said clearly, uh, Jan Feb data is still getting populated. So, which is very, very good. We, so, we are now in March, uh, mid March. So, within one and a half months, you have the data. Uh, whereas you don't have to wait one and a half years in, in other data sets. Right. So, you could, um, is 12 months exceeds the maximum number four can only be processed. 
so we'll have to reduce it. Uh, we can reduce it as monthly. So monthly is 12. Uh, so it says 12 months you have selected. We can only do four months. So let us reduce this time now from, uh, let's say, June, June, uh, May, May, May to, so that is the monsoon period, uh, to May, June, July, August. Uh, so we can do August, right? Uh, May, June, July, August. So four months. Uh, and then it, it populates the same thing again. And now it says, okay, guest limit. We are a guest, so we can only do this much. Uh, and if you have an account, you'll get more. So this is what I'll be clicking on uh, to understand what this data is, okay? So if you want to read the metadata about the data, you can click the link, it will open here. And you do have uh, a good analysis of uh, vegetation derived from a model uh, and then um, multiple types of vegetation indexes. We have greenness fraction, leaf area index, climatology, uh, etc. Okay, so once we have this begin date, end date, you can say plot data. The plot data will plot the data. As I said, we needed time series area averaged. So it is now running. You can see it is running. It is not using your computer's memory or software. You are given the code. So when you click the boxes, automatically the code is developed and sent to the um, NASA's computers. And there it is actually processing. So this processing is there. So your internet speed uh, and your memory uh, power does not get affected. So here you are. Uh, analysis for India scale. It just took 10 seconds. Maybe my internet was fast. The, the uploading and downloading is fast. I just checked the upload download speed before we started this class. Um, mine is pretty good, um, but in a, in a normal situation using your mobile internet, Wi-Fi, you can get this within a minute. Okay, so you could see here from May, the NDVI is increasing. That is what it says. Uh, the unit less NDVI doesn't have units and it starts from minus one to plus one, the time series average of NDVI for the entire India uh, at 0 0.05 degree resolution. Everything is given here. You don't even have to type this in your reports, uh, but you did it because you actually uh, plotted it, uh, the boundary, and you said, this is the time series. This is the NDVI I want to see. And this can be done. This Giovanni can be used for multiple, multiple parameters, not only NDVI. I'm only showing NDVI because this week is linked to NDVI. So I'll be showing this. So you have different options. Uh, you can show the title, show the caption or remove it if you want. Uh, but let's keep the title. Let's keep the caption, which is here. The user edition was defined as this is this, which is India. India boundary. If you can take the lat longs of this and put it on the lat long calculators, you can see it is India and then the visualization results. You can download this as a, an image. The data can come as an in, in image. You could see that the time series average, area average output was taken. So for the entire India, all the pixels, to do this, it takes a lot of computing power, but you have done it within a couple of seconds because of the supercomputers linked to NASA. So beautifully, you can explain that, oh, from 1st May, 1st June, July, and, and August, the NDVI is increasing. That is because most of the monsoon happens here. So in, in um, Maharashtra, the monsoon onset is June, uh, let's say June 1, um, and then uh, June 6, the first week. So June 6, normally it comes. So you can see that uh, after that, it peaks, starts to peak up, and now the plant is growing healthy uh, well. So let's do another one. Uh, let's do uh, Jan, Feb, March, April uh, to see how uh, it comes back down. Uh, um, and then you can say back to data selection. And here you can go to, uh, let's say, two, Feb, two, five, two, three, four, five, five. And then I'm just going to go to results. We'll go to the original results. I'm going to plot data. So when you do plot data, So the previous exercise is here. You can see that input plus download in lineage. Everything is there, but we'll keep it out for now. This is the history. And now our other file is downloading, getting, getting access. Successfully ran the time series average for the entire India within 10, 15 seconds. And now you have this. So can you understand this now? What's happening is uh, initially the winter uh, crops were slightly growing. There was irrigation happening. 
uh, and after irrigation it plummets it shoots down because of people harvesting it and the summer kicks in in march so you see from february march april may so may slightly there's another round of irrigation uh, because a lot of people do uh, uh, some groundwater irrigation subsistence farming etc and there's some other summer monsoons in some region to to reduce this what you would do is go back to data selection uh, you can go up and just put a bounding box uh, near uh, you can zoom in okay so let's zoom in zoom in then oops I'll take this box out you pick this hand and now you can move let's say you want this maharashtra region this part this style is enough let's say this style is enough so i just draw a box here okay and then i close this map and NDBI is fine. Uh, the data range is that. Uh, and then let's say plot data. So this is the th third time series we are doing. That's why it's saying three. Again, this I'm not using GIS, but when you download this time series, this is an analysis, this is a plot. You can actually put it in your reports. Uh, if you want to do it from scratch, you will have to download it. So if you don't take Maharashtra region, you see how it goes really down. So for my region, I know there is no summer monsoon. There is only um, uh, really drought at that time. Uh, so it just goes down. There is no even irrigation doesn't happen because there's no water. Groundwater is going down also. So when you take the entire India, it's a different um, it's a different uh, ball game. Uh, like for example, this one, the entire India is different. Uh, Okay, let's, let's click this one for, for analysis. So we have the same time frame. For entire India, it starts at 0.33 uh, and then comes down and then goes up. Whereas for Maharashtra region, it is just going down. This is purely because we do not have a, a monsoon in the summer. Uh, it comes only in June. So until then, it's just really, really dry region in that part of the world. So you can download the data, etc. You can change the type of results you uh, analysis you want. If you don't want time series average, you can see a time series map. So now what you're going to see is a map for that area. I'm going to say plot data. So this is not a time series data. This is not points, but you're going to see a map. Takes a little bit more time uh, because you are uh, launching. So look at what it's saying. It's launching the work, uh, attaching the data files in the cache from here to there. Uh, and then doing the time average map it takes a little bit more time uh, because now you're going to see a map that going to come up. Successfully ran the image. Now it's computed. Visualization is being created. So this is the GIS step, right? You'll you'll do the analysis, you do the visualization, and then you plot it. Uh, and all of this is done for you automatically. There you go. So this is the region we said, right? Uh, and in this region, so the entire thing is average to one value in this time series. This is an average of this, but now if you see, it is a every pixel in count, right? So every pixel is taken. You can zoom in to see the pixels and where the green color is. You can download this as a geotiff. In the previous uh, download, you only see image, but here G, uh, geotiff, KMZ, PNG, NetCDF, all these are usable in uh, GIS as a raster. So now it's a raster data, you can download it and then put it up in your um, database. Uh, so again, it will ask for your uh, uh, online uh, link uh, for downloading the data. But make sure you you have the link already uh, when you start. Just log in and start. So this is about Giovanni. As I said, you can use multiple multiple uh, uh, data set. All this will be stored in the cache memory. And once you go to a new page, all this will be deleted. Okay, so all the history will be deleted. And this is really cool analysis that you can do within a couple of seconds. Uh, and uh, the units would be different here. You can see that 0.39 to one. Whereas here the uh, units are different, uh, but again, as I said, uh, there's a scaling which needs to be done. Uh, you'll have to look at the data, what is the range and then scale it. So the value is minus one to plus one. Uh, it cannot go above and beyond that. So this is a, a scaling that they have used. Uh, 
Okay, so I would I would recommend using the GeoMoney. You can go to uh, back to data selection. Uh, you can collect the different disciplines uh, and then do the same thing. If not NDVI, uh, you can say vegetation fraction. Uh, you can say uh, measurements, what type of measurements you want. Let's say soil moisture. Uh, you can do soil moisture also. Soil moisture, soil moisture is there. So if you know soil moisture is very high, you don't have to irrigate. So that is the understanding of soil moisture. And for that same location, we can say that this is soil moisture per percentage at 25 kilometers, pretty large uh, compared to the uh, NDBI. And then it will give you at different depths also. Okay, so you can say at 0 to 4, 40 to 100 centimeters depth. So 0 to 10, 10 to 40, 40 to 100, 100 to 200. So 200 centimeters is divided into four data sets and then given. This is also uh, meter cube by meter cube. So it's kind of, uh, you can you can say unitless, but normally people express it as meter cube by meter cube. Uh, let's say 0 to 10%, which shows the, the, the initial part. Okay, this is daily, right? So you can see here that the uh, soil moisture data that we clicked is uh, daily and it says only four days you can click. So let's see what data range they have. Uh, you can see that the, the most recent one is 2016 for that data. Is that correct? Yeah, it has 1979 to 2016. So it stops at 2016. So we cannot use, if you want, you can use it. Uh, but I would go for more 2023 data so that we can have some soil moisture. So there's a soil moisture 2011. Uh, you can limit the data here uh, in temporal resolutions, monthly, spatial resolutions, etc. Right. So these are 24 2022. So 2022, uh, uh, yeah. So this this we can do. So 2022 November is available. Uh, let's click this one and unclick the other one. Yeah, that one clicked already. And then let's say uh, date. Uh, it cannot have so much date. So we'll have to say two and then only daily, right? So daily, um, you can say uh, these are the two data sets and NDBI I'm taking out. So yeah, let's pick a date and plot data. Uh, it will plot the data within February, whatever data is available. Um, and then uh, plot the maps for that particular thing. So it says scanning data for that particular data set. Geovani is very, very important for um, understanding different um, sectors. So now you could see that this is 100 to 200 centimeters underground uh, soil moisture value at 25 by 25 kilometer grid. So this is pretty big. Um, uh, but it's pretty useful because these are uh, based on uh, ground penetration data. So uh, even if we have this, you can tell the district collectors that if there is need to be water released or groundwater is going to be used, um, can be told by these images. So with this, I will stop the Giovanni uh, exercise and NASA exercise. From US level now, let's go to Sentinel Hub, uh, as we discussed in the slide. So this is the link that we will be using, the Sentinel Hub. So we're going to go to the Sentinel Hub uh, now by opening a new tab. So from here, we will go to Sentinel Hub, okay, sentinelhub.com, uh, which I've given the link in the um, presentation. So it says a cloud API for satellite imagery, uh, and you can use for Explore Hub, request a trial. Uh, you can go to uh, the explore the hub part. So here is the what the data is about. Uh, I would like to, you to take you to the EU, EU observer, which is the uh, Earth observation uh, browser. And all these uh, data sets are there, what data is available, etc. We'll just jump into uh, uh, the data section and you can see that there is Sentinel, which is European, Landsat, NASA, Commercial Collections, DEM, uh, Copernicus, again, uh, a service database from Europe, MODIS, NVSAT, US, etc. So you can also bring your own data and then undo it. So uh, we'll go back and then launch the uh, Explorer. EO Explorer is what we need to open. Please note the um, browser extensions, etc. So you can accept the... Um, I will not use the tutorial, so just go here and then use it. 
Okay, so here we have already uh, done a, a couple of uh, exercises, but uh, let's see what we want. Um, you can you can say that you want uh, um, these are the different uh, indicators you have. You have agriculture, vegetation. Let's go to vegetation. Uh, in the vegetation, you see uh, certain data sources that are existing, and uh, up to 2023, 19 March, which is kind of today, where we are doing the range. Uh, we can say February to March is good, uh, and uh, that is the data that is available. So you can say that you can say advanced search for Sentinel, uh, etc. Or we can say agriculture, and then agriculture is only Sentinel two, uh, and then we can get this data. So commercial data is also available. If you want, you can sign up and then do it. We have to pay for some of it, uh, and then highlights is uh, what what agriculture regions. Then recent news articles they have written publish using this data. So let's go to search and then this data find, we will just search, let's see how much data we have. So this is 19th of March we are on and you can see this is just three days ago, this image was taken and you can already access it here. So uh, this is very, very interesting and cool uh, because um, okay, before that I should have done Pune uh, just to keep it in Pune Maharashtra. Yep, so we are in Pune. So you can see Pune is coming when you click Pune Maharashtra. Okay, so Pune region. Um, okay, let's say Sangli. Sangli, why? Because um, it has a lot of sugar cane. So you can see the NDVI for the sugar cane, right? So until now, uh, now we are in Sangli. Okay, so you can see that these are the other tools that are available. You can also do the plot as we did in Giovanni. Uh, you can plot the data, but first we have to select the layer. So here we have 26 data sets based on the data date. And look at this, you have already cloud cover. So would you use it? We don't want to use all these cloud cover data. So normally the best data sets uh, are coming on the top. So we will go to back to search and then search now for Pune Sangli region. Uh, so now the data is getting updated because Sangli we didn't type initially. So now Sangli and we have around only five results. Uh, and this is good. This is really good because uh, March 10th, this data has been taken. So let's do visualize. And so the, the, the Sentinel-2 data has been visualized. Again, Sentinel-2 data has multiple bands, okay? Uh, and this true color is made up only the three bands, four, three, and two, uh, which is giving you the true color. Uh, and uh, if you want, we can look at what are the bands, uh, Sentinel-2 bands. And then you will see uh, a list of the bands in Sentinel-2 uh, that are available. So Copernicus is good because that is where the European Space Agency is, is having. Um, and then you have all these, uh, Sentinel-2 has 10 spatial resolution bands, B2, B3, B4, and B8, et cetera. And then 20 uh, meter spatial resolutions. These are the other 20 meter spatial resolutions. So some, some bands are, um, uh, high resolution, some bands are low resolution. So the 10 meter spatial resolution is uh, B2, B3, B4, B8. Uh, B8 is kind of your red, uh, we'll check what it is. And then your two meter, 20 meter is, is multiple bands and then you have these bands also. So you can see here, it is given here as B8 is, uh, if we can zoom in, uh, that'd be great, uh, we cannot. Uh, so B8 is here, B3, B4, B8. So B8 is in the red visible near red, near infrared, along the red side. Um, and then B2 is your uh, blue. Uh, and then all these are visible. So visible is what we can see with here, the with here colors we can see. And then the B3 is your green, uh, light green you have. And then the B4 is your orange kind of red. And then the B8 we cannot see by human eye. Uh, and that is your uh, uh, red color. So this is mixed in the composite. So now if we go to the Sentinel Hub, it says 432. So the 432 is 432 are mixed. So red, blue, green are mixed. Uh, and then uh, the primary colors are mixed to make this image, which is the true color. The false color is 843. Uh, so 843 is a false color. It uses the infrared region um, data. So eight data is red, which is the uh, visible near infrared. Some part of it is visible, and that is why you could see the red. It gives you the uh, growing period, growing color, et cetera. So let's go to true color. You can see all these uh, land parcels. Sangli is very, very known for uh, sugarcane. So you'll see a lot of sugarcane in Sangli coming up soon. 
uh, and then the indicators. So these are the indicators. You have NDVI, EBI, Enhanced Vegetation Index, the Normal uh, Rise Difference Vegetation Index, uh, and then the Moisture Stress. Agriculture uh, is B11, B8, B2. Uh, so you can see where the agriculture is happening uh, along the area. Uh, and then you have SAVI, Soil Adjusted Vegetation Index. So just by clicking, the NDVI just populates. The metrics, the indicators just populate. Uh, and this is the beauty of using the uh, Sentinel Hub. So every uh, platform has its own, um, uh, you know, use and uh, benefits because they don't want to redo what others are doing. We are more interested in NDVI. So beautifully, NDVI comes, uh, and for that particular date, which is just um, 15 days ago, we are looking at. Uh, so let's look at the date. So this is 2023 10. Uh, nine days ago, not even uh, two weeks. Uh, and you can also say how we can compare. Um, so this is March. Uh, and you could see that there's a lot of parcels of land uh, that is uh, being uh, under cultivation. I've been there, so I've seen a lot of sugarcane, uh, li literally a lot of sugarcane being harvested. So one thing we can do is beautifully, we can add to the compare. So I'm adding, so it, it adds to compare. Here also you can do a login, but to visualize as a guest, it's okay. You don't have to do uh, all these um, things. So you can go to uh, back to search. So one 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 data set we have created, you go to discover, you will take the other data sets. Uh, and then this is in February. Uh, what we could do is we could uh, realign our uh, back to search and then say, maybe pick a, a previous date in uh, 2022, let's say November, uh, and then say search, you can say search for the same dates. Um, number 15, right? So say search. And then you get the number months at the bottom, right? So you have the number months. Um, you can sort it by date or the best data. So this data is good. So all these data have some issues, cloud cover, some white is there, we don't want that. Uh, we can use this color okay so clean image you can say visualize the same visualization comes up uh, let's say ndvi and then the ndvi gets populated uh, and i'm going to add it to the compare okay so compare is we're going to compare live the two ndvi data visually and then we can download it if we want um, to download so free to sign up so that you can download all these data sets so here we have the compare, uh, and let's say this left side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the left side image. So this part of my computer is going to be my uh, NDVI from November, uh, and this part is going to be my NDVI from current date, March. So you could see that uh, the, the data set is converting more to green because during November, you still have a lot of moisture in the ground, uh, soil moisture that contributes to agriculture, and that can be used widely for the sugarcane, whereas groundwater recharge is high. March is almost setting into the summer, so you will have less uh, vegetation growing, and that is what this color difference is saying. Remember, this is the same bands. We are not changing the bands. We are taking the NDVI. Let's go here to see um, uh, what this NDVI is about. You can see here it is a normalized vegetation index, range minus one to one. It gives you these, these colors. Um, and uh, it has been uh, more info is, yeah, here, B8, B4, B8, B4. So B8 is your uh, visible near infrared, so NIR, let's say NIR minus red, B4 is red, it's not orange, it's red color. So B8 minus B4 by B8 plus B4, that is what the equation we've shown in class. You can see here the equation uh, given. So in the compare, we have seen beautifully the two data sets being compared. Uh, and once you have the uh, the, the um, education mode can also be turned on where you have better access to some data uh, and theme uh, also can be done. So I'll take this normal mode. Okay. So in the compare, we have this data set. Uh, and you can draw in the search, in the, in the search ones, you can have, um, yeah, in the search ones, you can draw and then see where, uh, how big the polygon is. Instead of saying Pune, Sangli, you can actually draw and that box can go in. So it's kind of like a bounding box. Uh, you can upload a shape file to do it. Same like Giovanni, you can upload a shape file and download the data. 
uh, and then you can have a point uh, of interest uh, and then uh, other resources. You can also measure um, and download the image. You can download the image um, without uh, much um, problem. Uh, you can say you want overlay maps, analytical, you want analytical map is currently available only the basic image. So you don't have a high risk print also you won't have, uh, but at least you can download the image and then do it in particular formats. You can also animate all these, you have to log in, uh, do a 3D map, uh, analyze the histograms, colors, et cetera. So this is pretty cool uh, in terms of using a free open source system without login I've done to show some people might have some issues in logging in, uh, but um, it's pretty safe. I do have login accounts. I'll just show you how it is done. Uh, so I've logged in now uh, and now all these come up, right? So you can say that uh, you can have just this area. I want the, um, you know, you can measure the area for a plot, say, okay, 637 meters perimeter, 0 0.05 kilometer square. Uh, you can now download uh, some of the images, georeference or PNG, no georeference is there. Um, and then you can also do it uh, with georeferencing that we have taught in class. Uh, some analytics cannot be done. Uh, okay, let's say visualize, discover. We go back to discover. Okay. Go back to search, go back here, go back to NDVI, and now the analytics can be done. So this is basically the area I wanted, and uh, it's just calculating the analysis. So you can see here, uh, the green values are here, uh, and you say there is more green, right? So now if I uh, use a different data set uh, from my um, previous example, uh, let's say, or you can say just 10, and then let it populate. You will have a better uh, histogram because uh, okay, it hasn't populated. Okay, these are in the Jan month. So let's use one in the Jan and then the population comes up. So you can see now a better high uh, green uh, number of greens uh, because it is good for, uh, so the, on the other side, right? So, so six is um, green, you'll have a lot of green because there's a lot of NDVI calculated. So this I'll stop. Uh, I will see you in the next class with some more indicators. Thank you.